All right, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm going to start the meeting with our land acknowledgement. Uh, we acknowledge that the land on which we gather is Treaty 2 land, traditional territory of Anishinaabeg, Cree, Poja Cree, Assiniboine, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Metis Nation. We affirm our commitment to moving forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of collaboration and reconciliation. I'm considering circumstances of June 15th and, and the incident near Carberry. I'd like to take the next uh, short while to have a moment of silence for the victims of the bus incident. Thank you. Further, I would just like to take a moment to um, convey the, some sentiments from our community of uh, the support that we've received from across the country during the last week or so. Uh, firstly, I'd like to commend and send our best to the first responders, the fire departments from Carberry, Nipo and Portage, and others that um, assisted STARS Ambulance, Prairie Mountain Health, and particularly the RCMP, who uh, you know had the tremendously difficult task of, of being on site. And further to that, uh, when the Family Support Centre was established in Dauphin that Thursday evening, uh, the, the work of the local RCMP, I think, was um, stellar. And uh, the job that they had to do in that very difficult environment uh, was um, quite a challenge, and I want to thank them. In addition, I'd like to thank our city staff, um, Sharla, and uh, in particular, and our Fire Chief Cam Avery for being there on Thursday evening and to get a sense of, of what we were going through as a community. And then by extension, just the rest of, of staff here at City Hall was tremendously supportive. I know I had my face in front of media quite a bit, but um, all the work was being done by people here at City Hall, and I commend all of them for their, for their effort and the action that they took um, during some of those difficult times. And I'd also like to shout out to Council for their support during what went on last week. And in a particular note, um, Councillor Randy Daly and Councillor Ted Ray, who, who led the charge, so to speak, on getting the Community Support Centre up and running, um, and sp especially Randy for, um, you know, formerly all the information and expertise that he had being our emergency measures coordinator um, was put to good use. And I think that the efforts that the city um, brought forward during last week was um, as good as we could have done during that time. Further, there was a number of people reaching out to us from across the country. I'd like to acknowledge the federal government. I spoke with Prime Minister Trudeau and with uh, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland. I spoke with Lieutenant Governor Manitoba, the Premier, the leaders of the opposition, uh, many mayors and reeves from across the province reached out to us, offered their assistance. I spoke with the former mayor of Humboldt very shortly after the accident, and, and he was very helpful. And I know our administration spoke with um, folks in, at Humboldt, and their help was, was um, very useful in those very early hours. And finally, um, just I would like to publicly state the support we received in the community from the Ministerial Association, from Prairie Mountain Health staff, and um, in particular, the citizens of Dauphin who reached out and assisted and consoled. And um, as they were grieving, um, they stepped up and helped um, the rest of us. So we're just at the beginning of this experience but um, that difficult first week or so, I think, is now behind us. And as we start to grieve and deal with all of the funerals that will be occurring in our community, that's actually, they've already started. Uh, so the next couple of weeks will still be particularly difficult. But I would like to state that um, 
again, we did as good a job as we could at the time. There'll be difficult days, weeks, and months ahead of us for many people that were directly involved with the accident, but that um, as a community, I think we are, are there for each other. And um, that was um, reassuring for me in particular, as I saw all of the activities last week, that um, it just, uh, you know, it was just a wonderful opportunity in a terrible tragedy for people to come together and help each other. So when I say wonderful, I mean the actual people reaching out to help each other um, in such a difficult time for all of us. So, um, and a final note, and just as an add on to, uh, I think that um, the media, as they dealt with us last week, was was very, very respectful, whether it was our local media, um, the provincial and, and uh, national folks that came to town. Any uh, conversation I had with any of them, they always started with, um, you know, we want to respect you and, and your community. And uh, so I just wanted to acknowledge publicly that they were very professional in how they were dealing with us. Um, I know it's a bit out of order, but is there anyone else want to say anything at this time in regards to this incident? Or we'll save that for councillor privileges later. Okay, we'll do that. We'll move on then. And I'd like to call the meeting officially to order at 5.05. Um, you'll notice that there's a couple of councillors um, absent today. So um, councillor Bellamere and councillor Stikilo are unable to attend the meeting, but councillor Daly is with us online. So so the call the meeting to order. And uh, here we go. Moved by Councillor Sobring and seconded by Councillor Ray. Don't have to do this one because we don't have any amendments and we don't have to do this one. So moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, be resolved that Council accepts the regular Council meeting agenda as presented. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Seeing none. Here. And moved by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, seconded by Councillor Daly, be it resolved that Council waives the reading and accepts and approves as circulated the minutes of the following meeting, and that's the regular Council meeting dated June 12th, 2023. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Seeing none. Motion is carried. I'll move to the consent agenda. We have a number of um, items under the consent agenda today. First being um, an action item, a proclamation, Lung Cancer Awareness Month. I'd like to call on Councillor Ray. Whereas lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death among men and women in Canada, accounting for more deaths than colon cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer combined. And whereas over 20,000 Canadians are expected to die of lung, can lung and bronchus cancer in 2023, representing nearly one quarter of all cancer deaths in Canada. And whereas, according to research by Canadian oncologists, Lung cancer is expected to be the most commonly diagnosed cancer in Canada, with over 30,000 new lung cancer cases expected in 2023. And whereas funding for lung cancer research trails far behind funding for research of many other cancers, and additional research is needed in early diagnosis, screening, and treatment for lung cancer, as well as in lung cancer affecting women and lung cancer health disparities. And whereas organizations working in Canada, such as the Canadian Lung Cancer Screening Initiative, are committed to educating about lung cancer and lung cancer screening and working to increase lung cancer screening rates. Now, therefore, we, the Council of the City of Dauphin, do hereby proclaim July 2023 as Lung Cancer Awareness Month, dated at the city of Dauphin in the province of Manitoba, this the 26th day of June, 2023. Thank you, Councillor Ray. We have a number of filing items. We have some information from Community Futures Parkland, their June 2023 newsletter. We have a letter from the Minister of Environment and Climate on their merit-based grant program. And we have a Manitoba government news release regarding mental health and community wellness, uh, the uh, mental health support in rural and remote areas. 
Moved by Councillor Daly and seconded by Councillor Sobring, be it resolved that all items listed in red under item 5C, the consent agenda, be approved and form part of these minutes. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Seeing none, motion is carried. Moved by Councillor Sobring, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, be it resolved that Council accepts as information the corporate report for June 26th regular council meeting from the Deputy City Manager, and that's for the month of May. Um, Lisa, can you uh, highlight or any um, specific yes. information from that report? Thank you, Mayor Boziak. Although my report covers my work uh, during the month of May, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge on behalf of administration the incredibly tragic bus incident on June 15th. I have to say that I'm proud of Mayor Boziak for handling the media requests over the last week with compassion, tact, and sensitivity. And I'm thankful to Council, our staff, and our community for pulling together and for stepping up to show the world that we care about each other and that we reach out to help in times of greatest need. On behalf of administration, I'd like to say that our thoughts are with the families grieving loved ones lost and the families worried over loved ones still recovering. On a brighter note, I would like to also mention that we now have two community bulletin boards installed uh, for notices regarding yard sales, garage sales, and events. One sign is located by the Residential Recycling Depot on First Avenue Southeast, and the second new sign is on Dauphin Marketplace Mall property uh, between DQ and the Manitoba Liquor Commission. So we welcome residents to post their signs, no staples please, but post your signs and ask that they kindly remove them once the event has ended. So in accordance with the zoning bylaw, any uh, yard sale, garage sale and event signs posted on boulevards and other city property will be removed. Uh, so we appreciate your cooperation and we hope you have a successful season of yard sailing. Thank you. Um, thank you, Lisa. Um, any questions or comments from any members of council uh, to the to Lisa, the deputy city manager? No. Seeing none, um, call for the question. Then all those in favor of that motion? Anyone opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Daly. Be it resolved that financial accounts, having been examined by council, be hereby authorized and approved as follows: We had ninety-four checks in the run for a total of $1,063,195.72. There were no voided checks in the current range. There were no voided checks in past ranges and we had no electronic payments. Like to call for the question then. All those in favor of this financial report? Anyone opposed? Seeing none. Moved by Councillor Daly and seconded by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, be it resolved that Council accepts as information the unaudited financial statements before the PSAB adjustments for the period ending March 31st, 2023. And those include the general fund balance sheet and income statement and the utility fund balance sheet and income statement. And as mentioned at previous Council meetings, um, our Director of Finance is getting us caught up uh, month by month on these um, outstanding financial statements. Questions, comments from anyone? Call for the question then. All those in favor, please indicate. Thank you. No one opposed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, seconded by Councillor Sobring, be it resolved that Council accepts as information the reserve report for the period ending March 31st, 2023. Questions or comments regarding that report? Seeing none, call for the question. Thank you, Count. Motion is carried. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, seconded by Councillor Daly. Be it resolved that Council accepts as information the following engineering report for the June 26th meeting. That's from the Director of Public Works and Operations for the month of May. Uh, the Director is here. Uh, Mike, did you have any anything you wanted to comment regarding that report? Uh, no, I'd just like to apologize. It's been a while since I've uh, provided a report. Uh, I've been extremely busy the past, uh, well, really since March, uh, and snow melted, and we've been we've been going. And uh, crews have been very busy um, getting our spring and summer work started. And uh, I believe the water main renewal project on Seventh Avenue is set to start tomorrow. Seventh uh, Avenue Southeast. 
better make sure that's right. But um, and yeah, uh, the first week of June, I was able to uh, attend a national conference in Winnipeg uh, as part of the. It was hosted by the Canadian Institute of Technical uh, Transportation Engineers, uh, and it was uh, really really informative and good. And uh, I actually presented on Dauphin's active transportation strategy uh, along with Jamie Hillen from Urban Systems and. Uh, we had lots of praise uh, from large municipalities around the country who attended our session, and uh, yeah, it was, it was really interesting and beneficial. So that's about it. Thank you. Any questions for the Director of Public Works from Council? Seeing none, then I call for the question. All those in favor of the report, please indicate. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Locke, and be a result that Council accepts his information and minutes from the following committees. We received um, the Communities in Bloom regular committee meeting report from March 23rd, the Fort Dauphin Museum, their regular board meeting, their manager's report, and their balance sheet um, as of June 13th, and the Intermountain Watershed District, their regular committee meeting from May 25th, 2023. Questions or comments regarding any of these reports? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor, please indicate. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, carried. Moved by Councillor Daly, seconded by Councillor Ray. Whereas the Audit and Finance Committee reviewed the 2022 audited financial statements at their meeting of June 26, 2023. And whereas the Audit and Finance Committee recommends Council approves the 2022 audited financial statements, be it resolved that the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st be approved and that council authorizes the mayor and the deputy mayor to sign the statements on behalf of the city. I just, before we have any, the vote on this motion, I'd just like to acknowledge that we had a clean audit on this report and I'd like to commend uh, our director of finance for all the work that he and his department did on preparing this and also our auditor for getting it back to us by the deadline because if we don't get it back by the deadline and submit there is a risk of potentially a withholding of um, of some uh, provincial and federal gas uh, tax revenue so we have all of that um, in order and we're very pleased to see the clean audit report questions or comments from many members of council seeing none call for the question all those in favor None opposed, carried. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, seconded by Councillor Ray. Whereas the South End Highway Development Project requires storm sewer upgrades estimated to cost $8.15 million, which will require financing through a debenture. And whereas the storm system benefits the community as a whole, be it resolved that Council accepts as information a memorandum dated June 23rd from the Director of Finance recommending that the storm sewer upgrade project be financed through a community-wide local improvement debenture. Further be it resolved that Council agrees with the Director of Finance's recommendation and authorizes administration to prepare a local improvement plan to finance the storm sewer upgrades required for the South End Highway Development Project. Questions or comments from members of Council on this motion? Seeing none, I call for the question. All those in favor, please indicate. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, motion is carried. Uh, moved by Councillor Daly, seconded by Councillor Sobring. Whereas the City of Dauphin is pursuing the repointing of the masonry at the Watson Art Center and has secured two grants for this project a Building Sustainable Communities Grant up to $25,000, which are matching dollars, and a Heritage Resource Conservation Grant, which again is an up to $25,000 grant in a matching fashion. And whereas the city released a request for proposal for the Watson Art Center brick repointing and received two submissions ranging from $39,697 to approximately $500,000, be it resolved that Council accepts as information a memo dated June 26 from the IT manager recommending that the contract for the Watson Art Center brick repointing be awarded to Stiles Masonry for a cost of $39,697.88 plus taxes 
and requesting that the initial budgetary estimate of $88,000 be approved for this project to provide flexibility should any problems be encountered in the restoration of the bricks. Further be resolved that Council agrees with the ICT manager's recommendation authorizing the appointment of this award to Styles Masonry for the indicated amount and approves the initial budget estimate of 88,000 for the project and authorizes the contract to be signed and sealed by the city manager on behalf of the city of Dauphin. Questions or comments regarding this motion? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? None, anyone opposed? Seeing none, carried. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, seconded by Mayor, or by Mayor, by seconded by Councillor Sobering. I'm on projecting, projecting, foreshadowing, whatever, never mind. <laughs> Whereas uh, Westman Communication Group needs to replace some underground cable on city owned public reserve on plan 2163, located on a Parkway Street, extending onto Whitmore Avenue East to improve their residential and commercial services in the area. Be it resolved that council accepts his information and preliminary agreement that would allow Westman Communication Group and its contractors to install such underground cable on the above mentioned public reserve while a formal easement agreement is being drawn up and a memo dated June 20th from the engineering servicing supervisor recommending that the preliminary agreement be approved with the conditions that Westman Communication Group is responsible for completing the survey for the easement location prior to installation restoring the disturbed area to equal or better than original condition following the installation and paying all costs for surveying and preparation or registration of the easement, which would include a $500 easement agreement fee per, plus any legal fees as per the city of Dauphin fee structure fines and charges by law 09 slash 2022. Further be a result that council agrees with the engineering service supervisor recommendation and authorizes the preliminary agreement with Westman Communications Group for the installation of this cable on city-owned public reserve on plan 2163 to be signed and sealed by the mayor and the city manager on behalf of the city of Dolphin. Questions or comments from any member of council on this motion? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Seeing none, motion is carried. Moved by Councillor Daly, seconded by Councillor Lachlan. Be it resolved that Council accepts as information the West Nile Virus Service Purchase Agreement with the Government of Manitoba, which outlines the responsibilities and cost sharing arrangement for mosquito larva sighting in Dauphin, effective April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2024. Further be it resolved that Council accepts as information a memo dated June 23rd from the Deputy City Manager, noting that under the agreement, the province pays up to $5,050.69, which is equal to up to 75% of the pre-approved amount of $6,734.25 for mosquito control activities to reduce the risk of human exposure to West Nile and Dauphin and recommending this agreement be approved. Further be resolved that Council agrees with the Deputy City Manager's recommendation and authorizes the purchase agreement with the government to be signed and sealed by the city manager on behalf of the city of Dolphin. Questions or comments regarding this motion? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Seeing none, motion is carried. Motion by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, seconded by Councillor Daly, whereas the Dolphin Business Park, jointly owned by the city of Dolphin and the rural municipality of Dolphin, in subdivided into lots and vacant park lots are for sale. Be it resolved that council accepts his information from Manitoba Hydro, an offer to purchase the 2.57 acre Dolphin Business Park, lot 13, plan 64087 in Northeast section 162519 for $20,000 per acre plus applicable taxes for the purpose of constructing a liquefied natural gas regasification station. Further be it resolved that Council accepts his information agreement to sell and purchase between the RM of Dauphin, City of Dauphin and Manitoba Hydroelectric Board and a memo dated June 22nd from the City Manager noting that the RM of Dauphin has accepted by Council resolution the above noted offer to purchase and recommending that Council approves the offer. Further be resolved that Council agrees with the City Manager's recommendation and approves the sale of Lot 13, Plan 64087 in Northeast 16, 2519 to Manitoba Hydro for $20,000 per acre plus affordable taxes. 
and a further clause further be it further be it resolved that council authorizes the mayor and city manager to sign and seal the agreement on behalf of the mayor <laughs> questions or comments regarding that seeing none call for the question all those in favor anyone opposed seeing none carry Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Lock or Deputy Mayor Lachlan. Whereas the province of Manitoba's arts, culture, and sport and community community celebrations grant program supports community celebrations that bring Manitobans together to showcase their unique culture and heritage, be it resolved that Council accepts his information and request dated June 14th from Deborah Slonowski, the Regional Connections Program Manager, on behalf of Amanda Novak, the Executive Director of Dauphin Neighborhood Renewal Corporation, requesting a letter supporting. DNRC's application to the Art, Culture and Sport Community Grant Community Celebration Program for funding to support tapestry, a celebration of diversity. For the result that Council values the diverse heritage and culture in Dolphins residents and authorizes the letter regarding this um, application. Any questions or comments regarding this motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those councillors in favor, please indicate. Anyone opposed? Seeing none. Um, moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, be it resolved that bylaw 06 2023, being a bylaw of the City of Dauphin to adopt the development plan, be now read first time. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? None opposed. Seeing none opposed, carry. Moved by Councillor Daly, seconded by Councillor Lachlan. Councillor Lachlan, you are the deputy mayor. I am sorry, that's the second time. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, yeah, Friday night, I'm still, you know, upset, but inside joke. Be resolved that council accepts his information, the following invitations. From Tutsanabing First Nation, the annual Treaty Day powwow of July 20th, 2023. That's an invitation for the mayor and from Vermilion Growers, their grand opening of July 27th, 2023. Further be resolved that all expenses related to council and senior administration attending these events be borne by the city of Dauphin. Questions or comments? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Seeing none, motion is carried. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, seconded by Councillor Ray, be a result that Council accepts his information, the community event listed below, and that is the Northwest Métis Council Walk with Pride Parade, June 28th, 2023. Questions or comments? Seeing none, call for the question. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Seeing none, carry. Moved by Councillor Daly, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lachlan, be a result that Council accepts his information. The Councillor's reports for the regular council, meet, council meeting of June 26, 2023. Councillor Daly, since you're um, attending the meeting remotely, how about we start with you? Hey, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I attended uh, on June 12th, uh, the last Council meeting. Uh, on the 15th of June, I attended the uh, cinema fundraiser at um, Fusion Credit Union uh, at lunchtime. And then in the afternoon, Councillor Bellamere and City Manager Griffiths and I attended a meeting with Nicole Yunker, PJOC, Deb Slanowski of Immigration Services, Janie and Kathy from uh, Almost New Store to discuss um, things that their clients um, struggle with on, on a sort of a daily basis. The, the key uh, topic on, on this meeting was transportation. So we, we agreed to um, loop them into working with the DNRC committee on studying uh, transportation and moving that forward as uh, with stakeholders. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to Phil Fafard was sort of the point man on that one for DNRC. So I'll continue to work with Phil and Nicole Yunker. Uh, um, of course, then the bus accident was also the same day so that consumed our time for, for the uh, next four or five days. I would like to shout out, of course, to uh, Sharla and staff at City Hall uh, for doing wonderful. Martine and Ember also stepped up. Brian and Lindsay from DRS uh, 
made it easy to get that support center set up. Uh, we didn't even have to explain it to him. It was just done. Uh, Ted, of course, uh, helped me out tremendously. Of course, Mayor Boziak uh, deserves kudos. And the DRS staff as well uh, were very good to us during the weekend and, and very uh, accommodating and polite to people. Um, the last shout out I want to give, of course, is to the uh, therapy dogs. Dexter, Boo, Bell, Sarge, to name a few, but I believe there were eight in total that came through. Uh, we, we never even asked for them. They just showed up. So they were uh, they were tremendously uh, effective, I think, in, in uh, what, what they were offering. On the 19th, I attended the PNP, and then on the 20th, I traveled to Winnipeg to the Manitoba Association of Municipal Emergency Coordinators uh, conference, uh, I was asked to speak uh, at the conference on uh, effective communication between uh, municipal emergency coordinators, senior staff in the municipalities and councils. So that was a good session uh, to go to. Of course, everybody wanted to know about uh, how we managed. So it was, we got a lot of support from 100 people at that. Uh, from all over uh, Manitoba that were at that conference. On uh, the 22nd, I attended the press conference, the RCMP press conference, and then later that evening, uh, my wife Kit and I attended the memorial. And that ends my report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Daly. Um, Councillor Ray. Thank you, Mayor Boziak. Uh, June 12th, I attended our last regular council meeting. On the 14th, I manned the barbecue at the complimentary lunch held for all our city workers at the shop. Uh, June 16th to 18th, I helped out at the community support center that was set up at the curling rink. On the 19th, I was present at our planning and priorities meeting here at City Hall. 21st, I traveled to Ethelbert to help out with Water Day celebration at the Intermountain Watershed District Office. On the 22nd, I traveled to Roblin uh, to take part in the district meetings. And later that evening, I attended the community vigil held at 8th Avenue Hall. Uh, this afternoon, I attended a meeting of the Audit and Finance Committee. Um, I would like to take this time to commend the work done during last week's tragedy by all the st city staff, and especially uh, Mayor Boziak, Councillor Daly, Sharla, Lisa, Martine, and Ember, as well as the DRS staff. Uh, the situation was handled expeditiously, but also with great care and respect. I would also like to extend my deepest sympathies to all those community members that are grieving the loss of a loved one and also extend wishes for a speedy recovery to all those that are in the hospital. Uh, that concludes my report. Uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Ray. Uh, Councillor Sobring. <coughs> Thanks, Mayor Boziak. On June the 12th, I attended the regular city council meeting. Um, June the 13th, uh, we I attended a Dauphin District County Van meeting. Uh, June the 16th, uh, 3 p.m. here at City Hall, I attended the accident uh, debriefing meeting with the city staff and mayor and council. Uh, June 22, uh, I attended the community vigil um, that was held at the 8th Avenue Hall led by the Ministerial Society. Um, I attended uh, or uh, exchanged a uh, multitude of emails and we had meetings um, dealing with a staff departure at Riverside Cemetery. And I just want to commend uh, Margaret Wazalishan uh, who stepped up and filled the vacancies uh, during this time, especially in light of the, the tragedy our community is going through. And also for uh, Councillor Be Kathy Bellamere who also stepped up and filled in uh, where, where it was needed and, and uh, provided some uh, much, much needed guidance and, and assistance. Um, before I talk about the um, the tragedy, I just want to also uh, not forget to congratulate the uh, graduating class of 2023. Uh, that um, might have got overshadowed, but uh, you know they um, 
they held a, a parade uh, to celebrate their success and uh, on behalf of the city, just welcome, wish them all the best uh, going forward into this next stage of their life. And then finally, um, I'd also just like to offer condolences to, first of all, the families um, that have loved, lost, lost a loved one, uh, that are still uh, have family members in the hospital, uh, the first responders who attended the scene, and then also the the, the emergency teams here in our city who uh, stepped up to help coordinate a variety of the activities, which I wasn't part of at all, but I know uh, it was in good hands. Um, the city staff, obviously very um, organized and uh, thorough with ad addressing any and all issues uh, that, that they could manage in a uh, definitely a unpredictable scenario. And uh, also to Mayor Boziak, uh, who's, who I think captured the, the feel uh, of the community and, and, and represented our city well. And he's very eloquent uh, with his words. And uh, I think he really captured the, the mood and, and, uh, of our city and, and conveyed that well to all the media and, and uh, people that came forward to offer condolences. Um, I want to thank the Ministerial Association just for organizing the vigil and uh, and, and I think um, I think that ends my report. Other than just, um, it's it's been a terrible week of tragedy and I know it's not gonna be over. And I know that this is something that uh, is gonna, is a life change for our, our community. Uh, we'll always mark uh, time as this, this event going forward. Um, and I think uh, we'll just also have to continue and be diligent to support each other not just in the weeks ahead, but months and years as we just kind of, uh, kind of keep, keep pulling together to, to keep doing the, the great things that the city is known for, uh, but acknowledging the tough times people are also struggling with. Uh, that ends my report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sobring. Uh, Deputy Mayor Lachlan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for myself, uh, I was actually, um, I'll echo the, what was said by my fellow councillors and you earlier in the meeting. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I was not uh, around uh, during the events of uh, two weeks ago, but um, I, it was safe for me to say, like it has been for the rest of council, uh, that things were in, in great hands. And I commend uh, city staff and, and the councillors that were involved um, in, in the things that have happened over the past couple of weeks. I too would like to send my condolences to uh, families and wish uh, everyone that is uh, remaining in hospital at this time uh, a speedy recovery. I returned on uh, June the 18th and when I did I came to the, uh, the meeting the next day on the 19th. That was our planning and priorities meeting here at City Hall. Um, also last week on the 22nd I went to uh, the Association of Manitoba Municipalities uh, June district meeting. Uh, in Roblin. Uh, I was re-elected as the Parkland District's uh, resolution chair at that meeting. Uh, lots was discussed as well. Uh, AMM getting ready for their fall meeting uh, along with uh, obviously a, a big fall uh, with the provincial election coming up uh, on the horizon. Uh, later in the day I did not attend the memorial and community vigil but I did watch it online. Um, again just the way things have been handled in the community have been uh, uh, first class. So just again, commending everyone uh, with the way things went over the last couple of weeks. On uh, June 26th, that is today, we had an audit and finance committee meeting ahead of this uh, meeting. And I do want to as well say congratulations to uh, the graduate, the graduating class of uh, this year. Um, and just looking forward, there's a bunch of great community events uh, going on this week. Uh, we've got the Pride Parade on Wednesday, 5 o'clock down First Avenue uh, Northeast. Uh, there's another big event this Wednesday. It's at the Habitat for Humanity uh, House. Uh, it's the key ceremony going on at 7th Avenue uh, Northeast. I believe everyone is invited to attend that event, so be sure to go out uh, and support Habitat for Humanity. Uh, as well, I want to wish the Dauphin Fair and the Country Fest boards uh, good luck as they get ready to host their uh, um, big weekends this weekend. Looks like the weather's going to hold out for them, so uh, good luck to both boards and on a successful uh, weekend and I do want to remind everyone because I know it's a big question out there the parade will happen this Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning and that ends my report thank you uh, Deputy Mayor Laughlin so just to to conclude uh, I'm not going to repeat what everyone has said I think it was um, very heartfelt all of your messages uh, today regarding what's happened in our community and and uh, I'd just like to remind everyone that, uh, as a couple of councillors mentioned, that we did have grad this past week, and 
and our student representative, Emma Fox, was one of the graduates, and she'll be um, moving on to um, pursue her education. And I'd just like to, at this time, publicly state, um, we didn't get to spend as much time with her around the council table because she was just so busy and involved. And she apologized the last time I spoke with her. She apologized for missing a couple of those meetings because you know she was in in Ireland playing rugby with the school team and stuff. But it was like, uh, what a wonderful experience that was because they came back and won the Westman um, League Championship and then they won the Provincial Championships. And she was a key participant on that team. But she was um, so involved in so many other things, both at the student council level and just in the community in general. So what a tremendous young person coming from our community. And I wish her nothing but the best um, as she pursues um, her career career choices. Um, I just would like to say, as we conclude the public portion of our meeting today, that um, we've gone through a really difficult time and we'll never forget what happened and it will mark us. Um, it'll be something we'll mark us or we'll remember for forever. But I just would like to acknowledge and remind the community that we must continue um, moving on and we have to manage um, as council and staff we have to manage the affairs of the city but i want to um, suggest to those members of our community to to get support if you need support to reach out whether it's through the ministerial association through the caregivers that have been um, so generous through Paramount Health. Uh, Councillor Daly indicated the the therapy dogs that were in town and were a tremendous benefit um, over the weekend. But that um, we have, uh, as uh, was mentioned, with the fairs coming up this week, we have a number of other events in the community. We have Country Fest on the weekend. And as people reached out to me over the past 10 days or so, um, I had indicated, and the message was, um, again, communicated by so many of us who spoke with the media, um, what support do we need? Well, just let us know that you're thinking about us as helpful. But I'd like to further that right now and say, um, as we continue to move beyond what happened and how we deal with it over the next days, weeks, months, and years, that um, if anyone asks you what they can do for us right now, I'd suggest come, come and visit us. Come to our community, come to the fair, come to Country Fest, come to the Ukraine Festival. Come to Northgate, come for a ride, Look, check, check out Vermilion Park, just show up and off and put your arm around somebody and, and just let them know that you're thinking about them. I think it would be very beneficial for us as a community as we, as we move through this and come to grips with um, how it will impact us. So, so again, um, I'd like to acknowledge all members of council for their very um, kind and heartfelt words today. And uh, just like to say that um, we'll make it We'll, um, we have shown that we can come together and we will continue to work together and uh, uh, it will all be good eventually for all of us. It's very difficult now for many of us, but um, I think uh, time will, will help us heal. So with that, I'd like to um, have a vote on the motion of uh, the reports. All those in favor of the reports as presented? Anyone opposed? Seeing none. That motion is carried. And I'd like to move by Councillor Daly, seconded by Co Deputy Mayor Lachlan, be resolved that council meeting be recessed at 5.45 p.m.